Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you today. Hey, today marks our tenth wedding anniversary, and I want to use this opportunity to thank my beloved wife Gloria, and she she's been such a blessing in my life oh you will not understand you will never understand this when i say things like this and and today 10 years we've been married it's been 10 years of of seeing the hand of the lord in our lives as a family and, and seeing god's hand on our children and and seeing how god has just been helping us Listen to me, it pays to patiently wait for the voice of God. And today, as I urge you to pray for us, I want to publicly say thank you to my beautiful wife for standing in faith with me these 10 years. There are times of great misunderstanding. They have been, because see, you can be married to somebody like you know some of us who we don't even know what will happen tomorrow now when i mean that i don't mean that in an evil way i mean we don't know the instruction we're going to receive tomorrow from the lord we have vowed our lives to do whatever he commands us to do so when you're getting married to that kind of a person, he cannot tell you this is my 10 years plan. He can't tell you. He can only tell you this is what the Lord has commanded me to do today. Praise God. Now, so how can you stand with that kind of a person? I know the pressure sometimes, but she's been faithful. She's received strength from the Lord. And, and I know, I know greater things are opening up from even this 10th year. I know. And I pray that God will supply you, Gloria, with the grace and, and strength to stand and that we fulfill everything that God has destined and, and given and a portion for us to fulfill. I love you and I'll continue to love you every single day. Thank you for watching over the children. And we see their progress. We'll see what they are maturing into. And I truly will say thank you for that. And so as we bless the Lord together, join me to pray for my family. And God will also bless you and make your family great. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we call for that daily bread for you? It is good. Join me right now and declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hey, lest I forget, yesterday was my birthday also. And I want to use this opportunity also to thank every one of you that called, that sent a message, that came around that send gifts, I say thank you. And on this day, my desire of the Lord is that he would remember you for good and bless you. Listen, this year, God is opening doors, mighty doors that you never imagined for you. And, and he's pouring out. I, I, I hear the Lord say this to me. You are going to receive mighty help from angels you're going to receive angelic help this year in the name of the lord jesus christ god will continue to bless you god will continue to keep you god this year sickness is far from your life in the name of the lord jesus amen thank you thank you thank you and for all the messages that you're going to send today thank you thank you god bless you praise god hallelujah all right now we have been talking about the most important things mm. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, yesterday I was telling you, the purpose, I remember where I stopped yesterday. I was making reference to something that Adeboye said about people who don't tithe will not make it to heaven. And I told you, the Lord told me that that's the truth. And the Lord gave me an explanation. I didn't hear this explanation from, from him till today. I've not heard, I don't know why he said that. But I'm telling you what the Lord taught me from it. And that's the attitude you must have. Don't have this attitude of condemning people because some, you think somebody has said something wrong. Hey, that can never be true. Hey, no, no, no. We have the Lord who watches over us. We have the Lord who's my Lord and who's his Lord. So if I believe that we have the same Lord, instead of going to him or talking about him, I'll go to our Lord and say, why did you allow him say something like that? See that now? And then he, now that's what I did. And then he, he began to talk to me. And I said, oh. you know, when an elder speaks, listen twice. Because an elder can just throw a word as a parable. If you don't catch it, I remember yesterday, we, okay, no, not, not yesterday. We, uh, we, we talked about sometimes the purpose of wisdom, the purpose of the book of Proverbs. It's so that you will understand enigmas. You will understand. Now, that's the whole purpose. When you hear words true, you will apply prudence. And, and discretion. This person is not a fool. Maybe I don't understand what he's saying. And we have the law. I've been doing that for many years. I hear something I have not, never heard before. Or I heard something that I feel, oh, there's something about this. I know where to go. I go to the Lord. I say, Lord, what's the meaning of this? And he comes. Jesus said he will teach you all things. <laughs> now that should be our attitude. And sometimes it will even help us. Because sometimes even when you see a minister... Now, you know, there are ministers who you just know that this one, there's, there's a consistency of, um, of joke in his life. You, know, you, you, don't, you, you, you don't see seriousness. You just, you just, and the Lord has never confirmed to you in your heart that he called that person. So when those ones, they say anything, just take their words, you know, just put it aside. But when you see someone who you know have consistently been walking by the Spirit of God. When you see them say certain things, don't rush to attack them. First, you should be concerned. But beyond even speaking to them, no matter how close you are to them. Now, yeah, sometimes it may help if you're very close to them to ask them, hey, why did you say that? And, and hear them out. But most importantly, learn to go to the Lord and say, Lord, why would this person say this? And sometimes the Lord will tell you things about that person. And what would you do? Lord, I want to pray. And, and, and please help this person. Help this person. Because you don't know sometimes people go through pressures, different kinds of pressures. Especially when you pastor a church. You see, there was a reason Paul told Timothy, it says, do the work of an evangelist. But now, many people don't understand that statement. Big statement that Timothy was a pastor. But then Paul admonished him and said, do the work of an evangelist. Because if you're just closed up as a pastor, you will get into this trap. I've, I've seen lots and lots of pastors get into that trap. You will get into that trap where the people their behaviors, their actions, and their belief pattern will begin to control your life. Not more the Holy Spirit. So now, because because the people become your limitation, their level of reasoning becomes your limitation. So anytime you're thinking of a message, you are thinking of how to fit in to their mindset or, or to their. Um, to, to where they are spiritually. 
That's why every church pastor must be interested in moving their members to do the work of an evangelist. And they themselves also must do the work of an evangelist. What does it mean doing the work of an evangelist? Hey, hey, go experience new frontiers. Go experience new things. Meet new challenges. That's what an evangelist does. Meet new challenges. Those things have a way of shaping your mind. Those things have a way of bringing questions to you. And if you're the type that will always run to the Lord, oh dear Lord, you will keep getting refreshed and refreshed and refreshed and refreshed. And you'll be growing and growing. It doesn't matter how long you've been in this thing. You will keep growing and growing. And how do you know you're growing? You'll be able to tell, say, do you know what the Lord taught me last week? Ah, uh -huh. he's growing. But if all the Lord teaches you is your members, this one, the Lord told me this one is doing this. The Lord told me that one is doing this. Hey, you're losing the way already. Yes, you are losing the way. When last did he tell you about heavenly things? When last did he bring heavenly knowledge to you to solve earthly problems? Yeah. So take note of that. So when you hear people say certain things, don't rush to attack them. Pause and ask the Lord, Lord, why is this person say this? Why does this person act this way? And allow the Lord to talk to you about it. Until he does, keep your mouth shut. I, I, I do that. Everyone that have publicly spoken against Titan that I know is called of God. Now, there are those who I know they are just players. You know what I mean by that? I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, why? Why would this person say this? And the Lord spoke to me about each one. It's not for me to come and tell you. No, it's, it's between me and the Lord. Praise God. So, so don't just attack them. Pray. And because when you pray, the Lord will speak to you. And when the Lord speaks to you, one, you will know truth and walk in it. See that now? And that's very important for you as a preacher. You must know truth and walk in it. Because if you don't know truth, if you're just existing like your members are existing, your life can be swept any day. I was talking to you yesterday about getting, from, from the day before, getting God's word concerning everything about your life. Now, any area you see fear manifesting in your life, any area, get God's word concerning it. Now, if you, if you just keep walking with the Lord, he will teach you a lot of things. It doesn't mean you are responding to fear all the time. See, but then you will just begin to find out that in every area of your life, the word of God comes to you. See that? So I was telling you, one of the ways that you can influence or get the word of God to come to you easily is by offerings. And the offerings also include tithe and first fruit offerings in, in area marking territories. Now listen, ah, let, let, let's see how far we can go in that today. Now you remember... God never spoke to the children of Israel about first fruit. He didn't give any clear command about first fruit until he began to give them instructions about the promised land. And even when he gave them that instruction, he told them when they get into the land. See that now? Moses gave them that instruction. When they get into the land, because see, the land, I, I want you to hear me because I'm talking about first fruit now. The land itself has been waiting for you to come. Now you have come. How will the land recognize you that you are the one it has been waiting to come? The first thing you ask yourself, who told the land that you were coming? God. And God must have told the land what you are coming to do. And God have told the land what the land is supposed to do for you. You see that now? Now when you get into the land, the first thing that you must learn to do is to honor the Lord. 
So Proverbs tells us, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. So shall your bands be filled with plenty and your pressure burst forth with new wine. Now here is how it works. You step into this land. I have come. God sent me to come here. Now I am here. Oh, God said I will get that job. Now, now, fresh food is usually connected to your inheritance. So I've been praying for this job. I've been praying for an opening here. And then the opening came. I got in. Ah, okay. Now, how do you show the land that you are the one that God told it was coming? The first thing you receive from that place salary allowance whatever comes first what do you do with it you honor the Lord with it why are you doing that to announce to that place I am the one that God told you was coming. The next expectation of the creation waits for the manifestations of the sons of God. Now I have come and hey, I am here to honor the Lord. So now I bear testimony that you have given me this substance, meaning this place have blessed me with this substance. So I'm not eating it. I'm giving it to the Lord. So I go before the Lord and say, Lord, I have come to the place that you brought me to. I have come to the place that you said I was going to get. I have come to that job that I prayed for and you gave to me. And now I bring these reports before you that the land, the place have given me this thing, this fruit, this money. See? And Lord, this is the first money I'm receiving from this place. It doesn't matter how small or how large it is. So Lord, I want to honor you with it. And report, it has blessed me. And the Lord will receive that offering. And that's your first fruit offering. Now, that's why if you study the, 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 the instruction Moses gave to them, he said the first fruit must be for the priests. You don't give your first fruit to widows, to, to mother. No, no, no. It must be to the priest. You have to hand it over to the priest. Why? He told us in, 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 in Ezekiel, it's so that he will cause the blessing to rest in your house. Now, because you're bringing a report before the Lord. So the giving of the first fruit is the transference and acceptance of the anointing. Very spiritual stuff, I'm sure. Don't you? No, you, you take it. Now, now, who's your priest today? Your priest today is your, your pastor that you have that connection with. See that? When you get that first fruit, because he's the one the Lord has honored in your life, you take it to him and say, I prayed concerning this job and the Lord has given. So in honor to the Lord, I bring this first fruit. Why? There are words the Lord will put in his mouth on the day that you bring the first fruit that will secure that place for you. Now, this is what happens, and I'm going to end here. My time is up. When you do that, there is no way anyone will be able to uproot you from that place. It's impossible. It's impossible. The only way that will happen is when you deliberately begin to act in foolishness. Our time is up. I, I pray you understand this. And may the Lord open your eye to this truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.